the 2019 Proton Iris and Persona has just been launched. And the surprising thing is, they're cheaper than before, bringing the fight to Produa for real this time. So the Iris now starts from under 37,000 ringgit, while the bigger Persona starts at under 43,000 ringgit. So the big question is, should you get these cars over their competitors, the Peroduas? Should you get the Iris over the Myvi? Should you get the Persona over the Produa Beza? Let's take a drive to find out. So we're in the 2019 Proton Persona. First, on the way up to Tanjung Jara, just south of Kuala Terengganu. We are here on the Kara Highway now to get a proper feel of the car outside of the Proton test track. This is, as you know, a facelift for the car, so the whole front face is new, it's got a new bumper, it's got a new front grille, it's got DRLs, but unfortunately, the headlamps are the same old reflector halogens as before no fancy projectors or LED units here. But then again, this is supposed to be an affordable family car. And it is affordable. Prices start at just above 43,000 ringgit and it goes up to 55,000 ringgit. It's a lot cheaper than before. And actually, it's about 5,000 ringgit cheaper than the launch prices back in 2016. At the same time, this car has a lot more features as well. So while well, the features have gone up, prices have come down, so in terms of value, this is a lot better than before. Plus, this car's main competitor, the Prodo Beza, also runs halogen reflectors without DRL, so this is a small step up compared to that one. As far as the looks go, the side, this car has 15-inch wheels, same size as before, but it does have new, more interesting design. And on the side, perhaps the biggest failing of the Persona is its awkward silhouette because it's based on the Iris, which is a tall hatchback. This has always had a slightly awkward shape on the side. It's got a very fat middle end and a short tail end. So yeah, it's not very visually appealing. But this one, they've tried to fix it a little bit by stretching the silhouette. Not physically stretching it, but by adding small little black lines at the bottom of the rear bumper and a small little black spoiler at the top, sort of like stretch your visual eyes to sort of make it look like the whole car is slightly longer than before. It actually works. I mean, if you somehow forget about the old Persona, just look at this one. This is a lot better looking than what you think the first Persona looks like. So overall, this car does look a lot nicer than before, especially the front end. As for the rear, well, it could be better still of course, but it's still an improvement over the whole model. As for the inside, it does have quite a few small little touches here and there. What I do like the most is the new instrument cluster. It's a lot more legible, a lot bigger than before. The numbers pop out a lot more compared to the old car. The old car had really tiny dials. You have to really focus and look at the speed you're looking at. I mean, it's not that it's hard or impossible to look at the speed that you're going at, but if it takes half a second more to look at your speed compared to a properly designed dials, that is a design failure in my books. So the new one looks a lot better as well. It's got two silver frames and much more legible dials. The numbers really pop out. And in the middle, there's a brand new color screen here. But unfortunately, this car does not have a full digital speedometer, which you could easily have within the screen. But what it does have is a temperature gauge on the left side. So for those of you who are particular about that thing, yes, this car has it. And in the middle here, there's the brand new Proton GKUI heat unit similar to what you find in the X70. No, we can't do the fancy things like open up your sunroofs or your windows or change your aircon temperature, but it can set your navigation points and your music controls. So in that sense, it's still one of the best head units in its class. It's also quite easy to use, the interface isn't too bad. Plus, I hope it doesn't hang like the ones in the old Personas and Iris. The rest of the car is pretty much the same as the old car. So it does have quite a few, say, ergonomic faults. The steering wheel, for instance, is still a little bit too big for me. I think it's just a bit too large in diameter. Plus, where the aircon vents are, all it does is freeze my fingers off. And beyond that, I think it's pretty good. The seats especially are really, really comfortable, very supportive, much better than those in the Pro Duas. Plus, the build quality, 
it's a little bit improved compared to the old one I think the dials on the aircon controls are a little bit tighter not as loose as before plus there's now damping on the indicator stocks so you don't longer get those loud clicks and clacks of the old car interior quality wise of course this is a long shot away compared to the X70 that is a few levels above but with the addition of the X70 like new gear lever and this Volvo like borderless rear view mirror I think it's slowly catching up like say the X70 is a proper Volkswagen Tiguan rival for now I think whereas this one it'll take a little bit more time a little bit more effort to be on par with say a Volkswagen Polo but it's slowly getting there going beyond the static bits the Persona is still a fabulous car to drive and this version is the best it has ever been the biggest improvement of course is in the CVT department yes it's still a CVT everything has been refined a little bit more so there's less of a lag when you step on the pedal it's still there of course it's still not quite as direct or as communicative as a proper say a four-speed or six-speed automatic but compared to the old ghastly Proton CVTs this is a big improvement under hard acceleration there's less of that annoying CVT drone so this is a lot quieter than the old car less annoying too because there's less of that initial lag of course so on the whole NVH is actually very very good the engine noise you don't hear so much and as is mentioned before this is quieter than a Proto MyV and with this new upgrades it's gonna be quieter still beyond that the wind noise as you can hear is not too bad but you do hear a little bit of the tire roar and that's only because this car has those really really cheap and nasty Silverstone tires that's got to be the first thing you change when you get your car as for vibrations there's a lot less now thanks to the new dynamic damper within the engine bay so there's less vibrations on the steering wheel the pedals the seats this gear lever especially so it's a lot more refined than ever before so that's it for the refinement and NVH let's go jump into the iris and talk about handling And now we're driving the new 2019 Proton Iris and it's about the same actually. If anyone tells you that it feels completely different to the Persona, that guy's lying. So what's new with the 2019 Iris? This is technically the second facelift for the car but it's the first time it's getting a proper visual update. The whole front bumper is different, the lights are taken off the Persona. So you do lose the projector headlamps of the old car but apparently a lot of people did not like the big bug-eyed look of the iris i sort of prefer the old look but could just be me in any case i actually prefer the new persona face over this iris face it would be nice if you know we get an option you want to get that face or this face but yeah maybe aslan Wolfman might kill me for that one so moving inside it gets exactly the same upgrades as the persona just that on the iris the interior is fully blacked out the bottom half of the, of the interior and as well as the headlining it's all blacked out to give it that little bit more sporty feel which I do prefer especially do not like the lower grey portion of the persona it might give it a little bit of a more spacious feel but I think black fits the design much much better another way to differentiate these two cars are in the small details the iris gets a lot of red stitching around the car on the steering wheel on the seats even the carpets have this red piping around them to give it that little bit sporty feel again similar with the black roof i think it all works it's not quite night and day between these two cars but as proton says this is for the younger crowd the sporty crowd whereas the persona is more for the slightly older more executive type i think yeah it sort of works for both cars now as for the way it drives, if you compare this Iris against the 2014, the launch Iris, it's night and day in the difference. The launch car was terrible in terms of the CVT, it was slow, it was loud, and there were quite a few, you know, quality issues as well. So all that have been fixed, or at least fixed as best as they can, given the limitations. And I think this is by far the best Iris it has ever been. The best thing about Iris is, of course, the way it drives. Most of the fundamentals are there, it's all on point. The steering especially is an EPS system, but it feels much better than most 
hydraulic systems out there. It's nicely weighted, it loads up through corners, there's a little bit of feel as well. So as far as family hatchbacks go, this is one of the best out there. And then there's the ride. In terms of ride and handling, I think this is almost there, almost on par with the Ford Fiesta. It's that good. This is a proper global level in terms of ride and handling. It's just that when Iris was launched back in 2014, it had a lot of major, major flaws to keep it from being a great car. The biggest hurdle for the Iris now is to sort of dispel its earlier bad reputation. When people think of the Iris, people think of, you know, quality issues, head unit that hangs up all the time, the super slow transmission CVT, and a few more other small little issues. But most of them have been fixed, and it's up to Proton to sort of convince people that the cars are now that much better. In my opinion, it really is that much better than the ones that came before. Like I said, night and day compared to the launch Iris. For the longest time, Proton felt like it was run by a bunch of car enthusiasts who put driving dynamics above all else. Look at all the old models, none of them had bad handling, even the Exora MPV had very solid dynamics. The thing is, they paid little less attention to the rest of the car, like the NVH, the comfort, the sound and all that. So now it finally feels like Proton has shifted their attention to the other parts of the car, the, the parts that matter to a lot more people. I mean, everyday customers will think more of the way the car feels on the road through bumps and through potholes, and that is more important than the way it feels through sharp, fast corners. And finally, Proton is looking at those other small little bits without, crucially, losing its advantage in driving dynamics. So there you have it quick drive of the new 2019 Proton Iris and Persona. So answering the initial question, should you get these two cars over the Proton MyV and Beza? Well, the answer is not quite as clear cut as yes or no, because it depends on who you are. If you love driving, then definitely yes, because these two cars' dynamics are still top notch. There's no beating the famed Proton right in handling. But on the other hand, if you just want a car to get you from point A to point B, then the Prodos do offer better practicality. They are easier to drive on a day-to-day -day basis, plus better fuel economy. In the case of the Myvi, it has a slight edge in terms of its active safety suite too. Having said all that, these two cars are now priced lower than before. In terms of value for money, you just can't beat these two cars. There's a lot of car for the money. Plus, on a day-to-day -day basis, they also do the everyday stuff a lot better than before as well. So what do you think? Do you think you should get these cars over the Pro Let us know in the comment section below and thank you for watching.